Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and as you can tell, it is a winter wonderland here, and it is, it's cold. I don't like to be cold, and we're doing something we've been wanting to do since 2015, and we're finally here. At least we finally got most of the pieces to, to achieve what we want to achieve. Let me take you in here and show you what we're working with here. This is gonna be really awesome. And then we have our integration panel for our heated floors, baby. Can you feel the heat coming off? It's not there yet, but hopefully, hopefully this concrete's gonna be warm pretty soon. These are the two missing pieces that we've needed. That's a pretty expensive uh, hot water boiler. And this is a pretty expensive integration panel. But we finally obtained these and it is go time. We got all the miscellaneous fittings and such there. We got to get this hung on the wall and start plumbing it up. Here's our manifold system. We previously installed this way back in 2015. We installed the heated floor. If you're planning on doing this, this thing's a real lifesaver. These are curved plastic pieces that help guide the PEX tubing down at an angle without kinking it. Uh, we have inlet outlet temperatures, on off valves, flow controls for each circuit. And I believe these are flow meters. Flow meters for each circuit. So you can adjust the flow. What we're gonna do is we're gonna install the boiler up there, the integration panel there. We have our gas here. So gas to the boiler, water from the boiler to the panel, then from the panel right into our manifold. Here we go. Got some two by sixes here attached to the wall. We're gonna go ahead and get the integrator panel here mounted to the bottom first, and then we're gonna try to mount the boiler afterwards, try to get optimal spacing for the vent and get it spaced in a good position in relation to the integrator panel. Um, got our integrator panel here down low so we're pretty close to the return and the inlet right on our manifold. So hopefully we can just drop down and go over. You could lay all this out on the floor, get your fittings lined up and everything, but really we're just, we're gonna wing it. We're gonna to pick up this thing, we're gonna mount it on the wall. There we go, that looks nice. So this thing feels ridiculously heavy trying to hold it up there. We have some slotted holes here. We're gonna try to measure, get a ballpark where those will be for this one and this guy over here and then try to hook that top flange up there. Uh, kind of stuck on this because uh, we got some girts up there we gotta miss. And then we need uh, 12 inches offset here between the two. So wherever this one ends, the next one's gonna be 12 inches up. Oh, line up. Oh. All right. So these exhausts, the intake and the exhaust vents have to be staggered if they're right next to each other uh, vertically, 12 inches is what the manual says. Or you can put them at the same height and extend them out a foot further. But that would look really weird coming out the side of the building. Uh, we have some problems here with the pallet racking. So I think what we're gonna do is Add some more fittings, kick across this way at an angle, go up and then out. I think that uh, I think that'll work all right as long as the instructions don't say you can't have too many elbows. So I think we should be able to do that. If not, we'll just punch this one out here, and then we'll have to put a longer pipe on the other one. We can punch it out right about there. So we're working on the manifold connections now. We have copper one inch to one inch 
threaded to uh, sweat solder connection. We got to make this corner here, and this worked way better than I thought it would. Uh, we had to make a notch here for the elbow. And if you can hold it up there, had to make a notch here in the corner for this elbow to make its way through around the pallet rack, and this worked really good. I'm going to show you how we did it here on the next one. Probably won't work as good because I'm filming, but yeah, we took a hole saw, we went in this way, we went in this way, and then broke a little chunk out, and our elbow fits in there real nice. Real nice. And just like that. Hey everybody welcome back it's the very next day we had the boiler up and operational last night the integration panel was pumping the fluid uh, throughout the system and things were looking good uh, but unfortunately the system shut down prematurely uh, and that's because we lost pressure we didn't get the system filled properly largely because we didn't have the right pump we were trying to use a little uh, small baby pump that's a transfer pump we needed a much larger half horsepower pump 
So with dad's help, we're borrowing his half horsepower transfer pump. We got it hooked up. And we also made a couple fundamental errors in how we rigged this up. So I'm gonna take you over here and show you what we didn't do that we needed to do. So we borrowed dad's half horsepower transfer pump. We got that all hooked up. There's a little baby pump that we were trying to use before. That's only a fraction of what we needed horsepower wise. Uh, it just wouldn't pressurize. This thing just wouldn't pressurize the system enough. Uh, so this guy here, this is gonna be the winner, hopefully. Uh, we got all the valves open. We got all the valves open over here, except this is the one fundamental thing that I didn't do. That needs closed. That way it forces the fluid around a certain path in the system instead of having two different directions to go. So this is one of the key things that we missed. So when we start pumping, we'll open this one, we'll open this one. We'll, so when we start pumping, this will be closed. We'll open this guy. We'll open this one to dump it out. We also have to make sure we have the air purge closed off. Uh, and now we'll start pumping. We'll open this up. There's no pressure in there because it all bled off because of the air bubbles. So we're going to watch the bucket of fluid. Watch for all the air bubbles to go away. And then we'll start necking it down to each individual circuit. I think, maybe. I think it has to go like that, so to go up, maybe. Open, open, but this one here with a critical sticker needs to be closed as well. Fill and purge. So... Yeah, let's try it. Previously with that little tiny pump, we can only get about 10 to 15 PSI. We need to be 18 to 24. So let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna turn this, turn these two valves. And unplug the pump. I don't know if that worked. The boiler's working right now, but we had that yesterday in the first go around. We just didn't get the pressures in there at the right PSI. Now previously I did clean, there's a little screen there. This guy right up in here. There's a little screen right here on the inlet of the boiler, really fine mesh that will restrict the flow through the boiler. So if that gets plugged, you're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, we left the hoses hooked up, it should be bled properly. We got 22-ish PSI up here on the hot leg, and then the other leg is reading about 5 PSI difference. It's actually more. I didn't fully evaluate if that makes sense or not, but I know there's supposed to be roughly a 5 PSI differential, and that's what we're seeing here. Uh, the flow. This is cold. Gives you inlet temperature of 56 coming in. All at temperature 106, flow 1.5 gallon per minute. Uh, we got all the valves for the manifold completely open. So as long as that doesn't get too low, I think we'll keep heating. Uh, this might be an iterative process. We might have to get in here and clean this screen several times uh, to flush the system out and get all those small particulates out of there. I hope we don't have to do it too many times. Anyways, we're gonna let this thing run. We'll come back. We got the thermostat set. I don't know if you can read that or not. Thermostat set at 45. Current room temperature 41 with a 36 degree floor temp. And we're floating around 1.4 to 1.5. Come on, baby, keep flowing. So we're still having some technical difficulties with this unit. The flow rate would keep dropping down after it ran for a couple days to a point where, yeah, it was restricted too much. We would clean the screen on the inlet over here. We would flush everything, uh, and then we would energize the circuitry, and you could see the flow rate on the meter drop down significantly right after startup. So it's like, okay, we're at two, two and a half, and then it would quickly go down to like one, 1 1.2. And then as it continued to run, it would drop below the minimum flow rate of the boiler itself, and it would shut this thing down. Talking with the manufacturers of the integrator panel, 
They have a great tech support team. They were able to make the suggestion of removing this screen on the uh, inlet of the hot water boiler. Uh, our circuitry here on the integrator panel has its own strainer on it. Uh, so we're kind of doubling up the strainers and uh, it just was restricted the flow too much through the boiler. Uh, now we're looking good. We got the floor set at 72 degrees Fahrenheit and it's actually 60 degrees outside. Mm, winter time in February, uh, but uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming it's going to get cold again this year before summertime, uh, but it's 60 degrees here uh, and it's February still. So that's a little bit of an oddity. We have the floor temperature sent to 72 and we've been maintaining that all day long uh, and it feels cozy in here. We're, we got the floor temp at 72 and the indoor temp is 70. We're looking at about 50 degrees ish outside right now. So things are looking up. Super excited. Uh, I don't want it to get cold again, but if it does, we have our boiler and our integrator panel back here. Super excited. Long time overdue. Thanks for watching, everybody.